It's fine, it's fine. Just as long as, long as they can hear, it's fine. You know? Okay, so um, thanks everybody for coming. Um, Thank you. Awesome. Um, so this is Yang Smekal. Smekal, yeah. Uh, Almost um, good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so actually, um, funny story is I I watched I like I first found him actually on YouTube. Really? Uh, yeah. When I was uh, making research about the university, because like I was like, you know, I'm not kidding. I, <laughs> I know not so like the numbers are not high, not so high yet. But <laughs> so I think it's very high. Um, high, but I'm, I'm glad I found it. I love the uh, one year. Ago. Okay, and what was what, what video was that, or what was that? It was general about entrepreneurship and shit. Like I literally um, YouTube and entrepreneurship. Ah, so so it was vlog. Yeah, yeah, vlog. It was from one of our events that we did yeah. at Startup Branch. Yes. And okay, got it. I remember that one. It's yeah, but also sometimes when you were walking, you were like walking to one of those. Yeah, yeah. I just did like I just did like I don't know like maybe Try it, like 50 videos, uh -huh. 50 vlogs from all around China where we went, what we did. You know, what kind of events and stuff like that. So, so that's what I did. Yeah. Can you hear me, guys? Or should I scream? <laughs> Just try to be slow. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. I'm, I'm too excited. And then, um, so actually, I wanted to get in contact with you, but at that point, I actually had the feeling you were too high. Like you were, you were like I, I was still in Germany. You know, I just want to know how is it going in Shenzhen. So then I, I, I went to PHBS. And like I went for TA at for Kevin without knowing him or anything. Nice. And then um, I joined the association. And then we had like I just told you like we had this meeting. We were like, hey, let's get in contact with people. And I was like, man, this <laughs> this guy he would be so perfect because he you know like everything in, in no, China. No, no, about, no. No, like I don't know everything, but but, uh, but so much, and we can learn so much from you just when you come here. Thank you, Shanshe. You're you're absolute. Uh, just a small ABC for you. This is like no, oh man. I come on. Like I've been through this so many times myself. Trying to start something, it's hard. I've been through it here at PHBS. It's hard to start association, to do events. So I appreciate that you're trying to do that, and I'm always very happy to support anything. You know, I don't care if there is five people or 15 people. I don't care. I think it's just super important to do something. You know, and to your point. You thought that I am too high. No. It's not about that. Like, like, don't ever think that. Like, I think you can reach out to anybody you want, but you just need to be a little bit smart about that. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, I talk about it so much in my in my blogs and in my articles because me myself personally, I have been able to reach to really really successful people. Yeah, I saw. But it takes time, yeah. and you need to be smart because you know. Again, I don't compare myself to like the people that I reached out to, not at all. But it's just like you get a lot of messages every day yeah. on LinkedIn, especially when you produce content, when you write articles, you get a lot of messages from people. Hey, I would love to have a coffee with you. I would love to go for a lunch. I would love to pick your brain, whatever it is. And you just need to filter because otherwise you don't do anything, right? You don't focus on your school. You don't do this and that. So, so you need to filter. So if you're smart, if you're able to really reach out in the way you did, like, hey, I'm studying at PHBS, I've watched you for some time, I think it's great, I'm doing this, maybe you could help us, like, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And people will usually say yes. If, they're, if they have some time on their hands, they will usually say yes. Yeah. If you are reasonable in asking, and if you're polite, if you're respectful, and if you're trying to provide value to them as well. Yeah. I think that's very important. Not many people realize that. Not, pre not, like, not long ago, you made a post on LinkedIn about the rules. Can, can you talk a little bit more about rules, just the about, basic rules? About what? About contacting people, like on, on, on LinkedIn, like exactly like yeah, what yeah. I need to do. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's very simple, right? So uh, I think it starts with really doing your homework. Like if you want to get in touch with somebody who is, let's say, high level or who is much busier than you are or who is like your idol or whatever it is, like you need to do your homework first, really get to know the person. Because again, you need to really be empathetic, right? Like, what do they go through every day? They get so many messages from people, especially when they're big, not me, but when they're big, you know? They get so many messages on social media, emails, you know, like, hey, can I can I meet you? Can I do this? Can I do this business? And and they filter, right? So, so 
first you need to do your homework and, and be, be very reasonable in asking, as I said, and sometimes really figuring out what's the value that you can, you can, you can provide. Because everybody has a problem. It doesn't matter if it's Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, who has 10 million followers on social media, but he doesn't know anything about China. Right. And that was my pitch. Oh, I you know, I was, I was pitching like, hey, I've been in China for some time. I am not a China expert, but I know some people, and maybe we can help you. Okay. And I was very consistent in that message. I never, I never really changed the message at the end of the day. You know, and of course, then it's, it's many other things, right? It's not just like, hey, figuring out what's the value and sending a message, and it's going to happen. It took me six months. You know, you need to be, you need to be consistent. You sometimes need to get introduction from somebody. When when somebody is really really high level, it it helps when you have somebody who's your friend, that friend knows you, that you're working hard, that you have a good heart, whatever it is, and, and he can introduce you to somebody on somebody's team, and then you get closer. And that's exactly what happened to me with that person. Like, I was definitely working hard, I was doing my homework, I was really letting people know that I'm interested in this, and I was doing all the work, all the blogs, and all the articles, I was, tweeting at that person all the time. Okay. And then I asked my friend who knows somebody on that person's team okay. and got an introduction and that was the start of of that thing happening actually. You know? Yeah. It didn't happen just like that. So I think first it's do your homework. You need to figure out the timing right as well. If somebody's really big, really busy, you need to figure out the value and, and, and be there at the right time. Which means you probably need to watch that person quite a bit. Yeah. Kind of stall that person, you know, especially especially if those people are putting out content on social media, you need to know almost everything they're putting out. You need to be really interested. Sometimes it's good to challenge those people, you know. Sometimes you can comment on those articles and you can challenge those people like Hey, what do you think about this? You know, I really like your article, but what do you think about this? This perspective. You need to pay attention to those people, right? And the last thing that I would say is like you need to be patient. Because sometimes they will say no because they're maybe too busy. Maybe maybe at the beginning I told you like I cannot do it this week. I can do it only in two weeks or three weeks because I was not here. I was traveling, right? So I think you need to be patient and not really give up after one attempt you know you you need to keep pushing you know so uh, i think that's that's important okay now, now we're talking a lot about like high people like really yeah. important. we are not interested in more like startups and chats uh, how like uh, maybe we can get right into it actually because we want to uh, provide value because with value you know we have to give something in order to take something yeah of course um, so what do you think can, let's say, 10, 15 people give startup companies and chances? Like, what can you propose to Man, it's, it's always, again, I think it's again about doing the homework, right? Like, I cannot, because every startup is different, so I cannot tell you three things that you're going to do, and suddenly it's going to happen, right? I think you definitely need to get out there. You know, you need to go out there and meet people, meet those startups, go to events. Right? Like some of the events are gonna happen here maybe at PHPS, but some of the events are not gonna happen here because you know most of the co-working spaces are in Nanshan or Futian or you know other places. So you will need to get involved, you know, and that's what I did when I first came to Shenzhen, right? Like I was similar to you, I was like, hey, I need to do something, you know? I wanna hey, how's it going? Um yeah, come join us. Um so Basically, like I was, I was really eager to do more than just like classes, right? And so every single day, or not every single day, maybe three times a week after my classes and everything, I went to to uh, like Coco Park or I don't know Sheko when they had some meetups, right? Like you can go to meetup.com, and I I went to Chinese corners. I went to like some different events and like so I met some meet people. Like it was, it was not special, it was like yeah. Yeah, just meet people. Like at the beginning, you just want to meet people in general, right? Because you need to know what's going on in the city, right? I've never been here. I have no friends outside of the university because I only spend most of my time at the university. And because I wanted to get to know the city, I need to I need to go out, right? I needed to go out, and uh, I did. It. And um, you know, I think that's something that you need to do as well. The good thing for you 
right now is that there's so many events happening <laughs> in Shenzhen. It's not only us, like, yeah, we do some, yeah. but there's so many other co-working spaces now compared to three years ago. Yeah. And so many incubators and so many conferences that you can just very easily go to either for free or just, I don't know, like 50 RMB or 80 RMB per, per ticket per person. And you can very easily get to know people like me or people that are local yeah. and they organize events for, for expats or for local Chinese entrepreneurs. Like there is just so many. And you can either find it online on meetup.com or Kuodongxing or like these platforms that are more local. Very easily. Don't, who knows those platforms? Have you heard about Huodongxing? Never, ever. Yeah, so I can send it to you. Like if you, if you want, I can send you a couple of events there or a couple of accounts that you can follow. But, but that's the Chinese platform. That's I think it's number one event platform in China. And I actually know the founder. We're just speaking together on WeChat because we're trying to do some events together as well. And they have a good platform for finding events, you know. And for you, it's going to be very easy. You can search in Chinese. You can also search in English. But of course, in Chinese, it's better. Um, or Meetup still works. Yeah. I think I think it's not the best platform in China, but it still works, especially for the expats community because yes. expats they are always more familiar familiar with with these platforms. Another another website is ShenzhenParty.com. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just party, but it's basically yeah. like expat. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's expat website and they basically post every single event that is relevant for expats or even for Chinese of course they don't they don't limit themselves on expats but it started like help expats navigate through the Shenzhen ecosystem there's just so many I can send you a couple of examples and you just need to go out there and, and find the people that you want to reach out to and talk to them and, and ask them like hey how can I help you I'm studying at this university, I'm doing this major, I would love to get involved with some startup organization, I want to learn, right? Yeah. And you know, you will see some of them will say no, some of them will say like, hey, I'm maybe looking for somebody who can help me with you know, translating my stuff into German because I want to expand into Germany. And maybe you can help them with localization, maybe you can help them with like, you know, finding some partners and stuff like that. And the same for, for, for Chinese, you know, like maybe there are going to be some people that, that, that need help, like some interns or whatever, like to really get their business going, yeah. right? There's just so many people that need help. You just need to go out there and ask. Um, so one of our ideas was also to um, provide them a platform to speak, like so that we maybe invite them here in a bigger platform and make it public. Like this is very private here, yeah. just for a couple of people of the association. But we were thinking like maybe if we can get more students from all the universities. So what potential do you see in there? Like or what what demand is there like for our startups actually interested in, in this? Man, I think there is always demand, right? Like startups are trying to hire people all the time, right? They wanna get interns, they wanna get people potentially later on full time. So for them, getting in touch with some of the best universities in China, which is definitely PHPS and Tsinghua and you know Harbin Institute of Technology and all the other schools that are in the region or that are here in this in this area, um, you know they want to get in touch with them. Especially like we did it many times with Kevin actually, or many times we did it a couple of times that I brought like very successful entrepreneurs to the entrepreneurship class that he's uh, he's teaching. You know, I brought my friend Trevor Owens, who wrote a book about lean startup, lean enterprise. I brought a guy that uh, raised millions of dollars on Kickstarter to talk to students, you know. So we did that. You know, back then, it wasn't really popular because yeah. people still didn't get it. They didn't, they didn't get like why I should attend this event outside of my classroom, yeah, exactly. outside of my uh, things that I need to do. But I believe that there's always somebody who will enjoy it. Yeah. And if you set the expectations right for the speaker, yeah. for the startup, like if you're gonna say like, hey, it's gonna be smaller, maybe it's gonna be 15, 20 people, but they're gonna be really excited about meeting you yeah. because they're thinking about starting on their own, something on their own, then, you know, it's fine. Okay. You know, and you just need to find those people that will be okay with that. You know, I don't care. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't care if there's gonna be 100 people or five people, like, I just, I just wanna figure out how we can help you maybe get something bigger going in the future because it's good for everybody. Yeah, thanks.
So I would approach it like that. Talk to Kevin, figure something out, maybe get some other students from Tsinghua, from Harbin as well. Maybe you can do something for 50 people, 100 people, or I don't know, get TEDx, you know, do TEDx at the university. I think somebody did that before. You know, somebody have done it here that they did TEDx, right? Like get the support from the university. TEDx is a great name. You know, they sometimes do it at the universities. And maybe that is going to be something that is going to get people excited. You know, maybe it's not startup grind, but it's TEDx. Maybe it's something, something else. Just like try to talk to people in the faculty as well and get something going. Now, can you tell us more about startup grind? I think most of them. Yeah, so, so uh, Startup Ride is basically something like TEDx, but we specifically focus on entrepreneurship. So, Wait, so does everybody know TEDx? Do you know TEDx? TEDx, yeah. Or TED. Yeah. Those videos that people share their you know, uh, ideas and inspiration knowledge. So we're something similar. The format is a little bit different because TEDx is all about the keynote speeches, right? That they go, they share their ideas, and they interact with the audience, right? And they have like eight minutes or 15 minutes to do it, right? It's like very, very strict, the format and, and everything. It's like fancy event with like, you know, lightning and stuff. We are very uh, lean in a way. We don't care about like fancy stuff. We try to do the events every single month. We, we really care about the consistency. And what we do, very simple, every month, we invite some really exciting speaker, entrepreneur that can share or she can share uh, the experience with the audience, right? In Shenzhen, we do both Chinese events and English events because we want to connect with both audiences, right? I have a colleague, I have a, I have a my friend. She's also a volunteer, and she's basically doing it, you know, in her free time, and, and she interviews somebody in Chinese when 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 needed, yeah. you know. And I interview people in English, and and we just try to give people inspiration and and bring something new, something that they have never uh, never seen maybe because we bring people from abroad. Like when people visit Shenzhen, some interesting entrepreneurs from all around the world, we just have them at Startup Brian, and they speak and they can connect with people one on one, yeah. right? So we try to provide value, build a community, try to build an entrepreneurial mindset, like why people should go out, should go out there, should help other people, you know, have more like collaborative mindset, how I call it. So, so that's that's what we're trying to do, and and we do it globally, we do it everywhere in the world. We have people in 350 cities right now, in Germany as well, you know, in Czech Republic as well, in in Africa, everywhere. Have questions? Yeah. If you have any questions, questions you can check them. Yeah. Just want to know more about the, that biggest community. Yeah, startup grind. So, yeah, is there anything specific that you would like to know? Like, do you have any specific question? Are you interested in joining, or uh, what exactly you're interested in? How can we join? Like, yeah. what are the requirements? It's it's very simple. So you know, there there are many. There are a couple couple of layers how you can get involved, right? Like the very first layer that is open to everybody. It's like, hey, just come and attend our event, right? We do those events sometimes during the weekend as well. So it should be easy for you to attend. Like if you have classes during the week, and I know that you have, you know, especially the first year or second year, I know it's pretty busy. I have been through it myself. So, so if you cannot do it during the week, then we sometimes host events on Saturday. You know, let's say after lunch, we have an event. It's usually in Nanshan, so it's pretty accessible as well. It's not very far away in Malbu, but like it's in Nanshan, and uh, you know you can just go buy a ticket. We usually have like a special discount for students, so that like students don't have to pay you know the full price. I don't know. Okay. You know, it's usually depends. Like sometimes we charge like 50 to 80 RMB, and for students it's like 50 percent off or something. You know, and sometimes I even gave Kevin some free tickets for for students to the entrepreneurship class, and we can. I can always like, you know, invite you even for free if you're really interested. So, so that's the first layer how you can get involved, right? The second one is you can become a volunteer. Let's say you're really excited, you want to learn, you want to meet the team, you want to meet the speakers, you want to spend some time in the community. And again, it's once a month, so it's not every day. You know, you can just do it during the weekend. You can just help out with promoting the events at the university, whatever it is. You can just become a volunteer. Basically, again, nothing, right? Like. The only thing you need to do is just talk to Grace, 
who is the who is the leader of startup round in Shenzhen, and, and you can just like you know she's going to ask a couple of questions, and if you are really committed to do something, then you can you can join. You can like there is no really like like a huge process like how to get you onboarded as a volunteer, right? We always want to work with interesting people or excited excited people, and and the third layer. Uh, you know, it's like you can lead one of the chapters, right? Like right now in Shenzhen, we have a chapter already, but we are actually thinking about doing Startup Ground University. So potentially, we'd love to do Startup Ground in PHPS, right? Like we don't have to do it every month, but maybe we can do events, I don't know, like every two, three months, you know? And we can bring the speaker that already comes for our event in Shenzhen, and we can just drive him or her to PHPS. And he can share, right? And you can do that. You can help us organize it because you have the association, you have connections. You're probably going to stay for one or two years, so like you know, you can figure it out, right? And so that's that's the that's the highest layer, let's say, that you can lead one of the chapters. You can be the person interviewing the speaker and working with the entire community. That's how we can join. It's very simple. Go ahead. What's your name? Sorry. Yeah, my name is David. David. David, yeah. Yeah, nice I'm, to meet you, David. Yeah, I'm already in one. Okay. Oh, so I have a question. Yeah, if I have no chance to for management, like management or some running some business, because I'm in a low layer okay. of business of company. Okay. So is there other ways for me to accumulate enough experience in the expert expert? You mean uh, so? So just I want to understand it. So so you're working for a company now. Yeah, company. And yeah. Low, lower level. Yeah, let's say. I'm just I'm just an engineer. Got it. Yeah. But you would like to get some managerial experience, like you know, managing people, yeah. managing the no, team. No, just um, like your side, your side people. Your Got side it. People. Got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you know, very good way uh, is actually joining some of the communities, right? Like like maybe maybe be a volunteer for some time. And it doesn't have to be this, right? It doesn't have to be Startup Grind, but it can be some other community uh, that is in Shenzhen. Yes. And you can basically accumulate even the experience of, of running a team or yeah. building a team there because it's the same, okay. right? Like, like yeah, we like we don't pay people to run Startup Grind, right? Like, yeah. like it's not a full-time job. Yeah. It's just like a free-time activity. But still, you need to. But you still need to work in a team, right? Like you need to assemble the team with people. Yes, and you need to get them excited, right? Like you need to like, how do you make uh, we need to work for free on this event, right? Like like how do you make it work? Like like you need to understand why he wants to do it, what is his motivation, you know? And you kind of like, you are a manager, you are a leader. So you can accumulate that experience there. And you know, of course the, the basic layer or the very first thing that you can do is like just read, right? Like read some books yeah. or some articles yeah, from, from people that actually have the experience and they will tell you like some of the tips, like how you can get people excited, you know, like what you should know as a manager or as a leader. There's so many leadership books that are pretty good, yeah. you know, they will give you like the idea of like how you should behave. But at the same time, you should practice, right? That's why you should assemble some, and maybe you can even build your own group, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Just uh, make more people to join. Yeah, yeah. You can just like, you know, maybe you can create a group around some some uh, some hobby or some activity, you know? Maybe you're interested in, maybe you're interested in like, you know, you're an engineer, and maybe you want to get better at, you know, coding and stuff. Maybe you can get get together with people that are also engineers and you can do events every every weekend every saturday for 10 people just to share experiences and maybe even invite somebody who is like more experienced and stuff like that and and, and you can try to assemble your own group or community does it does it answer your question or is there yeah, anything yeah. else yeah, okay it's very perfect okay cool if you need anything else just let me know Any questions? Could, could you give us an uh, overview of the startup uh, companies here in Center? Like yeah. uh, their working environment or because I heard from the famous uh, investor in US that they have like 996. Who is it? Who, uh, do you listen to the podcast or? The Moritz, uh, Bill Moritz. I forgot his name. Okay, okay. That is, is say that they work from sure. 9. 
to 9 p.m. True. For six days. True. A week. So it's pretty hard working. True. You know, hard. Yeah, it is true. Like, I think that's why I even stayed in China in the first place. Because I'm just so excited about seeing how people want to build businesses here. They want to succeed. They want to work hard because it's kind of part of their nature because they don't know anything else. They have always grown up in a in a way that they need to study hard. You know, they need to work hard. And again, I know for you, it, you know, you're laughing and like, you know, I see like it's hard. It's hard, but but like it develops certain habits that you know can make you really successful in life. Because like if you are okay with working hard because you're used to it, then you will always have you know kind of advantage you know over people that are not doing that or they are kind of like you know living in an environment that they don't have to push that hard you know and so the overview um, the overview of the of the Shenzhen ecosystem right like like definitely first of all Shenzhen started as a as a hardware hub right like factory of the world you know like all the iPhones and and all the all the things that we're using we have them in our pockets like usually or most of them are either made here or in the area right so so that's a lot of hardware startups a lot of hardware companies are here right uh, also uh, you know there is a lot of new trends emerging right with, with government in China supporting AI supporting sustainability you know green environment and elect electric vehicles and all of these things so there is a lot of startups that are trying to enter these uh, these verticals let's say or industries so you can see a lot of like software companies or robotic or automation driven or uh, autonomous cars or electric cars and and even like you know there's like a lot of high-tech right like one of the companies it's not a startup really but like VGI, right? Like one of the, the genome, the genome sequencing or like the genome-related company. Uh, they do a lot of lot of stuff here. They actually have headquarters, I think, either in Guangzhou or actually they. I don't know if the if the if the uh, if the building or if the location, the office that is in Shenzhen, if it's a headquarters or the headquarters in Guangzhou, but but they are here, right? Um, then you have a lot of companies that work with the giants, right? There's Tencent, there's Huawei, there's DJI, you know? Like, so there is a lot of companies that will probably be some sort of suppliers or they will be linked to these big companies, right? Or they will be emerging because they, the, the, the employees work, uh, the people worked at Tencent and they learned, they made some money, whatever, get some experience and then they decided like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start my own company. So it's probably like just leveraging the knowledge and stuff like that. So, so it's it's very I would say it's very diverse. It's not just hardware anymore, but the hardware is the biggest chunk still, you know, of the startups. Like even the people that I met when I first came to Shenzhen, like I always met people that were building some products or they were selling their products on Kickstarter. You know, it's just how it is. Oh, financial. Yeah, I like it. Right. Of course. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like you know. Let's say you know you have uh, uh, Pian Pian Bank, right? Like the biggest building in Shenzhen, one of the biggest tallest buildings in the world is in is in uh, Futian, right? And they also have incubator, they have accelerator. They try to kind of like get some fintech companies on board, and and they themselves are trying to build new services, right? Like fintech, fintech. So so I, I would say that the spectrum is there. Like like you can definitely find fintech startups. You can find VR AR startups. You can find you know, hardware startups, software startups, everything. You can find everything, but but definitely like Shenzhen is known as a Silicon Valley of hardware. So so there's a lot of factories, there's a lot of companies that are building products, hardware products, and selling them abroad. You know, or in China, of course. But but you you meet a lot of people that just like run Kickstarter campaigns or like other campaigns, and they manufacture in Shenzhen. And you know, that's why even Hux. I don't know if you have heard about Hux. It's yeah. an accelerator. And they have only hardware companies coming in every every six months. They have like new twelve companies coming in and like you know developing the products. And the new newcomers have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> questions. <laughs> it's fine. Maybe maybe they're gonna have some later on. Same. Maybe we should know. Um, 
Oh, actually, can you shortly tell us about the other event? For example, you also have dinner, right? Ah, yeah, yeah. So um, that's what we do, um, the dinner, right? So that's something that I've always wanted to do when I first came to Shenzhen because it used to be very hard for me and my friends to connect with successful entrepreneurs or people that we can learn from, right? But I couldn't do it back then because I didn't have the network, I didn't know people, people didn't know me. So we basically started this project like a couple months ago with my friends and uh, because we got to the point that, that people know who we are, what we do, we have a pretty strong network, so every time somebody interesting, interesting, or somebody, somebody, some entrepreneurs come to Shenzhen, they, again, I don't want to brag, but like they usually come to me because somebody introduces me to them, or they find me like you on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter because I'm very active in like sharing a lot of content about China and what we do in China, and so they 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 come to me and they are asking like, hey. We would love to get connected with some people here in Shenzhen or China. Can you help us? And if, if those people are really good, like meaning that they can attract the crowd or some really interesting people from companies like Tencent or Huawei or some other companies, yeah. we basically host a dinner, which is a very private event for like 10 to 20 people. And we just have a, we just have a dinner. So we, last, last week we had a blockchain and AI topic. So it means that we pick people from those industries or from those areas because then they can learn from each other, they can connect with each other. And we have people from Tencent, we have people from Google, we have people from Apple, we had some local entrepreneurs, we had some really successful community builders in the blockchain space to come and basically connect with each other and share experiences, right? But again, that's something that is hard to do if you're just getting started. You know, because you need some credibility first, and it took us like three years to get there, but finally we 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 pull it off, and I'm super happy because last time we had 24 people coming from all around the world, just like you know meeting over sushi, you know, and and just discussing what they're working on, how they can do business together. So so that's what we're doing, and it's always like startup brand is a community that is open to everybody. Everybody can come, everybody can buy a ticket. And, and get inspired or get connected. But these kinds of dinners and, and things that we do, again, in our free time, I don't spend a lot of time, but, but basically we do it just uh, once a month for people that actually want to do business together. And they're usually very busy because they run companies, they're, they're part of startups, they're venture capital investors, or they're just visiting China. So it needs to be very efficient. So that's why we just want to make it small so that they can connect and, and potentially they can continue doing a business uh, together. I know you say they're really busy because they're startups. So actually, in your other events, startup right? yeah. events, how many people are there who are in startups? Like because I've been to some events, but it, it, I had the feeling that most of them are more like I don't know, like they come and have a look. Of course, like again, as I said, it's open to everybody, right? We we don't. The only selection or the only filter is like, do you are you willing to pay for the ticket, right? Because we want to have people there that are actually interested because we don't want to have just people that come and just like hang out and like they they don't really care they sleep there you know and they go home right like that's not what we want because we want to make sure that everybody gets something out of it right so that's the only that's the only filter uh, so of course you will sometimes find people that are very excited you know they want to make stuff happen they want to connect with people they want to learn and they approach the speaker, they want to like have one-on-one -on -one, and they want to meet as many people in the room. But sometimes you feel, you just like, you know, find people that are, maybe it's not what they expected, right? right. Maybe they sign up for the event, they think it's going to be like this, and it's not, right? And it's, it happens all the time. Like, it's, it, it doesn't matter what kind of event you do, like sometimes you just get people that are not happy about the, about the actual event or result that they get, that, or something that they got out of it. Excuse me. So it, it happens, but, but usually, uh, let's say we do events on blockchain, right? So there's gonna be a lot of people that are in the blockchain space. So maybe they're investing into cryptocurrencies or they're interested in the technology, right? Like now, of course, in China, it's a little bit harder because of the ban, because of the regulation of cryptocurrencies and exchanges. So, you know, you cannot really do that kind of business, but there is a lot of people uh, that are interested in the technology itself, right? They're maybe running startups or they're doing some startups in Hong Kong or globally, right? Or 
there is people that just want to learn about the technology. Maybe in the, in the companies, from a big company, they just want to learn, yeah. right? Because they have heard how, how cool it is, but they have never been exposed. So they just want to come for this event and, and learn, yeah. right? So it's always a mixture. I think sometimes we even do like pitch competitions. So we, we did it last year with one accelerator, Silicon Valley based accelerator. So they brought judges and mentors and we brought like eight startups that were pitching their ideas. So in that case, you have some investors in the room, of course not the biggest ones, right? Because like the, the very famous investors, they will not go for such an event, but, but maybe some local investors or investors that are just interested in hearing ideas or just hearing like how people pitch and you know just get in touch with those mentors from Silicon Valley. So you have, you have investors, you have, uh, you have people that are interested in starting their company, they just wanna observe yeah. people, how they pitch and stuff like that, and, and then actual startups, right? So it's always a mixture. But I'm telling you, like, if you come for on any, any event that we do, you will definitely find some startups and some people that can, that can help you, that can connect with you, that can maybe come for, you know, event at PHPS, so it will always, it will always happen to some extent. You will definitely send at least one person from now on. You should, time. yeah, you should. More than welcome. Yeah. Just text me if you want to come. Questions? Questions? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Yeah. Like, uh, if a person approaches you with a startup plan or idea, like, what kind of support do you provide? Like, do you help yeah. them to start up on their financial sources, on tax, and the legal procedures, and things? Yeah, so. We don't do that because we are really driven, we're, we're a community, right? So we are not a service provider because we don't really have a service to sell to startup, let's say that they come to us and we are gonna help them to set up a company or to do the legal stuff and stuff like that. Like we don't have capabilities because our people, they're all just volunteers and they have their own jobs, they have their own startups that they are doing, right? So we don't have capacity to actually provide this kind of support. But what is good about the community is that there is always somebody who can help, right? So if you, if you come and you say, hey, I need to set up a company because I'm thinking about going to China and you know, exploring the market opportunities here, then we can always connect you with some agency or some person that can help you. Right? There is always somebody in the community, either me, myself, or our director, or our volunteers, or the people that have been to our events multiple times, and they, they can say like, hey, hey, I know somebody, I've done this before, you can go to this person, that person, and stuff like that. So, so yeah, we don't provide services at this network. point, but just network, exactly. So if you're new to Shenzhen, you have these questions, you can very easily come, uh, attend one of the events, and ask for advice and people will be more than happy to help you because we're trying to push the collaborative mindset and, and help others first and stuff like that. So so that's what we're all about. Okay. So are, are there any requirements to join your network community? No, we, we talked about it before. So so there there is like a couple, uh, couple ways how you can join. Like first one is just attend the event, which means that you know you just buy a ticket and we even talk like if you really want to attend next one, I can give you some discount or some free tickets for your association. It's not a problem. Or you know you can become a volunteer. You know again, it just means like come for our event. If you're excited, if you're committed, we can like get you involved. You can help us maybe promote the events at the university. We can always find something that you can do, and, and you can basically become part of the group. And you know you can talk to all the all the other team members and stuff like that. And then the the last thing is like you can run the chapter as well. You know, we can maybe open a chapter at the university, you know, like start hosting smaller events at the university, inviting speakers and people, getting professors involved and stuff like that. So, so there's like many layers. Every layer is like, you know, depending on your commitment and time that you can, you can, uh, you know, commit and you can devote, but it's not really that you cannot join. Like if you really want, if you wanna, if you wanna work a little bit, if you wanna spend some time, you can always join. Yeah, no problem. Sorry about my skills are below than many, especially the Chinese here. You have pretty good skills in your field, so don't underestimate yourself. Exactly, just go out there, ask, like, like what, is, what is the worst thing that can happen? Like, somebody will say no. Like, hey, I'm busy, I cannot do it, whatever. Like, what's that? Like, it doesn't matter. 
but people people like say no to me all the time <laughs> you know like I try I reach out to people and uh, you know if uh, if like those people are actually busy or whatever they will just say no they will not reply but like you know I will try again if I really care I will try again and I will try like again and again and again you know like if you're not like pushy if you're not offensive if you're not disrespectful like it doesn't mean it doesn't doesn't matter that you try 15 times you know and sometimes you will have to try 15 times especially if the people are very busy like I reached out to a person that has 10 million followers on on social media and that ha that is running a business that is worth of like 300 million or 200 million US dollars and I reached out like I tweeted him all the time like every day maybe three times I tweeted him like I see he's tweeting I'm replying to him and stuff do you think that he replies to me all the time <laughs> maybe once in 100 attempts he replies or he likes my tweet you know it's just like it's it's again like when somebody is that big you, ca you cannot expect that it's gonna happen right away like you can expect with, with me because I'm not that big and I'm like always very happy to help I say it openly on my Facebook or on my LinkedIn that like I will always reply back if that ask is reasonable like I will always do it like on the way to the to the metro station in the bus I will always take five minutes to reply to people that reach out to me you know on, on WeChat LinkedIn Facebook wherever you know but uh, some people will not because they're busy they don't care about it that much but you should still try because you might get lucky and then you're gonna stand out because so many people just want to ask but they never do because they're afraid you know I have, I have friends that reached out to really really successful entrepreneurs and because they just did they tried it happened they're lucky yes but they put themselves in a position to be lucky at the first place right if you just sit still and like wait for somebody to come to you it doesn't happen you know it doesn't matter if it's girlfriend or if it's if it's uh, if it's like somebody some idol like you always need to you always need to reach out you always need to like tell them you're interested or whatever Thank you very much for coming. I think like this was really amazing for us. Thank and you, man, for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.